Monday mornings with Matt and Kevin. Here are your hosts, Matt and Kevin. Wow, what a happy morning to y'all. You, you, you all, uh, you, you, you little, you little Irish, you little Irish. Uh, I know. I, I can't even think of the name of them. What, what are the little, the little green guys? Leprechaun. Leprechaun. It's like, geez, <laughs> man, it's, it's, it's St. Patrick's Day. I can't even think of it. I know everyone's listening to this on the day after it's St. Patrick's Day, but we're recording on St. Patrick's Day. I am drinking a beer. It's a German beer, but I am mm. cooking. I'm cooking right now. Literally, as we speak, we were postponed because I was frying up bacon to put into our Guinness stew. So uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It's pretty darn dark. It tastes like beer. I think my wife's going to hate it, but uh, I'm going to enjoy every second of it. So uh, sorry to my wife about the Guinness stew, but um, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I don't think she's going to be a fan, but I'm a fan. And that's in honor of maybe not St. Patrick, but in honor, honor of Ireland. It's also why I'm drinking a beer, I suppose. <laughs> so Matt, it's, it's good to be back. It's good to be back with you. It's been a couple of weeks since we've uh, had a show together. Um, so it's always nice to, to have a chat with you and see how things are going. And today we got a couple of interesting topics. I guess uh, apparently we're mushrooms, which I take, I take as a, as a high compliment. Um, thank you, Bergoglio. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, quotes from Pius the Sixth, and also you know we're going to brush up on the the Catholic or recent Catholic history in Ireland, in again in honor of St. Patrick's Day, which is very fascinating and even more tragic. Um, things to pray for, guys. Everyone needs to pray for it. But before we get going, I do want to do a couple of shout outs. I, I actually recorded a video to publish on its own and then deleted it because, well, I'm a bit of an idiot. Um, but please. <laughs> Everyone go out and check out today uh, Crusader Filmworks. That's good friends of the show. Uh, that is Eliza and Andrew Kiernan. They've been on the show a couple times, and uh, they, they've got some really good stuff over there. And they published a video that at, at my request, like I said, hey, guys, I really would love it if you could do a video um, for St. Patrick's Day called Our Lady of Knock. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, she has just an, an, a wonderful voice. She's a wonderful talent, and he's really good at putting together videos. So they're really, really a great um, combination of talents. And the video just gave me chills. Matt, you got to check it out after we're done here. I don't know if you've seen it already. It's really wonderful. It's really a great, beautiful video that will inspire you. And, and, and really, I truly think, help you to love Mary because it's about Our Lady. Um, so please check it out. Crusader Filmworks. I will really try to remember to attach that link in the podcast. I am, I know I promise that all the time and I never do it. I'll try to do my best, but I'm um, Crusader Filmworks. Also, a big thank you to Father <laughs> Timothy Geckel, who has recorded the Goodyear Passion the last couple of weeks. He spent hours and hours and hours recording it, and it's wonderful. It's it's amazing. It's such high quality. He's an amazing reader. Um, the editing is also very good. It sounds good. And the quality of the book, of course, is also exceptional. So if anyone's struggling through Lent, if you want to get a little bit of a pick me up, if you want to really hit these last two weeks hard and really, really feel it at the end and really think that you've had a nice Lent, a nice, you've earned your Easter, I suppose. Go check this out. I'm not just plugging our podcast. Seriously, at this point, the views, I seriously don't care. The, the podcast is exceptional. This Goodyear passion. It's every day. Father has recorded 15 or 20 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes every day from a busy priest. So please, he obviously thinks it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Go check it out. It's so good. And it will definitely give you that extra edge for um, yeah the rest of Lent. Matt, I'm sorry for that insanely long introduction. How are you doing? No, that was great. That was that was quite soothing and relaxing to listen to. Really, <laughs> really, really great opening. That's, that's that show, do. the show with Eliza, was excellent, and Thank people you. need yeah, to was. listen. To it. I really, it really enjoyed that. I did not finish. I'll ju finish on uh, my drive, but um, just her knowledge of. Totally. music and the the influence like it I, that was very well done so i like that people should listen to that well that, that, uh, that was we, another one real, real quick sorry but it was like i, I would yeah. i would say a song i'm like oh yeah what about this song and she'd like give the composer and the composer's i was just gonna say life. her knowledge was the, very, it was uh, amazing uh, incredible so no totally you're, you're absolutely right and the, the podcast that matt's talking about is is the what was it called? The the effect of the effect of uh, music, I believe. Music on yeah. society, on civilization. It's really, really, really good. She did a great job. And again, she's she's really a wonderful talent, which we have to I think we need to appreciate. Man. I think that's I know we didn't plan that that type of a show, but I mean no, sure. When you have when you have a talent, when we see a talent, and especially if it's if it's a talent that's glorifying God, we gotta not be so shy. I mean, we have to go out and mm -hmm. say, Hey, look, I have this, or I know someone who does, and let's let's 
bring it to the world because God gave it to us. I think that's a, it's something that we, and the Catholics oftentimes take this, you know, in the Bible, say, you know, meek and humble of heart. Meekness doesn't mean to be a little, you know, church mouse who never talks, you know, who squeaks, you know, oh yeah, I'm just this little, this little innocent little, no. Like St. Patrick. Out. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. St. Patrick. Matt, that's a perfect, perfect way to segue into, into St. Patrick. Go ahead. But a great yeah. proselytizer, a great oh, proselytizer. Amazing. He Incredible. would have been, have, he would have been so bad. He would have been so bad that Bergoglio would have put him on some list. Uh, on <laughs> called Epstein him a Island mushroom. Some, yes, he would have called him a, mu- a mushroom. Yep. That's actually, let me, let me kind of start there first because it's brief and then I'll go a little bit into Patrick, Ireland. A mushroom. What a rigid, mushroom. Rigid, a rigid mushroom. A rigid Stuck mushroom. in that in that lace the when i saw that quote kev about uh francis calling uh, us mushrooms first i i thought it was fake because first i i thought to myself why would he use the word instead of a contest yeah because right. he actually used that actual yeah, word first time i've ever seen and then he yes i don't know if i've ever heard any any no. of the post vatican uh claimants uh use that term and second to compare to my, now what is, i guess my question would be is what does that mean what does it mean to be a? Mar- I don't even know. Do you have any idea or any thoughts? What? <laughs> why would he think they're nothing but mushrooms? Maybe it's an expression in like Spanish or t- that I don't know what that would even be in reference to. But anyway, Which I knew. for for someone who is so much about you know religious dialogue and accompaniment and gazes and all of these things, um, it kind of makes me wonder why he would say that he feels sorry for us and sad for us. And then, well, I kind of put two and two together and really compiled just a, a memory bank of his quotes saying things, you know, like um, they're all stiff in their cassocks. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Those weird, these are actual quotes, by the way, these, uh, these weird hats in the shape of Saturn that they all wear on their heads as they don grandmother's lace. Like these are things to be actually said Crazy. to tie that all together with the sin of going backwards, something that he said was actually sinful. Um, so I, I guess that's why he feels sorry for us. He feels that we're those rigid triumphalists or whatever that he doesn't see as like, you know, being uh, joyful and, and happy and, and enjoying life. And I, that would be my interpretation of it. But I just found it odd that, you know, someone who is just so much about accompaniment and, 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 and gazes and caresses and all of these things. Uh, who no, you know, what is he said? No walls, no walls, no isolation, no isolation. Well, he has been very, very unfriendly to um, too many of us, and he feels sorry for us. So, well, well chicken, I, maybe I, we can turn it into chicken marsala, Kev. Maybe we can make a nice dish <laughs> out of it. Yeah, Some mushrooms hey, yeah, on I'm, top I'm, of chicken. I'm a fan. <laughs> well, when I, I wonder, Matt, I mean, you know, as you said, I, I think you made a really good point that no one's ever said that word before, I think, and I think it's a really that big I know, deal. Of, yes, I think it's a big deal. I mean. If you're looking at maybe not Susan from the council, you know, the parish council, but maybe Susan's daughter, you know, or whatever, or her cousin who is following, you know, Francis's, you know, Twitter account, they're, they're going to say, what, wait, say they, what? Say they, be right. On to, right. They don't know, Matt. I mean, most people aren't on Twitter and having arguments with Father Desposito. That, that's just not how right. it is. I mean, some people are, and they're better for it. They are. I mean, they're going to lose that argument, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, you know, but the point is most people don't even know what that word means. So, so I, I was curious. I just Googled the word state of a contest. And now don't get me wrong, guys. I understand how Google works, that they know what I've searched before and stuff, but I don't think I've ever searched that word. So I'd, I'd actually be really curious if everyone, everyone out there listening, go, go and Google state of a contest. Just that, just the word, tell me what comes up. I'd, I'd be curious. Tell me in the comment section, because I, first of all, it's, it's Wikipedia. Second of all, mm. it's where Peter is. Oh boy. That, oh yeah. That's not <laughs> great. Uh, I haven't read that yet. Third is, third is CMRI.org. And fourth is what is Save a Contism on Reddit. So um, I highly recommend anyone who is listening to this, go to the CMRI.org uh, answer. I think you're probably going to find that the most fair and honest answer, but uh, pretty interesting. So so Encyclopedia, where Peter is, CMRI, and then Reddit. Uh, purely, literally on the cuff. Pr- pretty interesting, man. I, but, but again, he's just... He's our biggest, he, he is our biggest aid in bringing in people to the true faith. Thank you, Bergoglio. Seriously, and I really mean that, like, from my heart. I think, very sincerely, he is on the path to hell, and he does that with what he says. He is leading souls to hell. I'm not saying he's going to hell. I'm not saying that. I don't know. Only God knows when he's there or not. But he's on that path. I think we can say that pretty clearly. But, well, you know, saying things like this is helping out souls. So, thank you. 
so many people have no idea what that term even is. You're right. So people are going to be like, what is he even talking about? And then the mushroom comment is even funnier to throw that in there. Um, there's a little thing on Twitter where people are putting the little emoji mushrooms next to their name. I haven't done it yet. And I don't think I want to do it and I won't do it. But I, it's, it's become like a little a little joke uh, on <laughs> on X or whatever we're supposed to call that website now. But yeah, that that term. I remember when I first heard it, uh, however long ago now, it must have been thrown up in conversation years, I mean, over a decade ago, I would think, and I thought it was another religion or something strange. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. So he is really a great, and, and I, you, you mentioned his uh, eternal uh, uh, judgment. I, I feel like he doesn't have much time left. Honestly, like I've it. just had, yeah, I just had some, you know, just thinking about it lately, and I just have this inclination that, um, you know, he's taken a lot of hospital visits, a lot of things have been canceled. Um, I think there's just going to be a point where we wake up on the news and see that he is kind of like Queen Elizabeth. It was very quick with her. Like we, I, yeah. I remember waking up one morning with her and it just said uh, the Queen's health has taken a serious turn. And I believe she passed that day. It wasn't even spoken of the day before. So I kind of have a feeling that uh, he uh, doesn't have much time left and we will be having a <laughs> A new successor of who knows what mold uh, will come, but he has planted all of these these men in the 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 electorate, I guess you could say. And uh, his successor, I would assume, would be even quote I guess you want to call it worse, uh, even more liberal and more progressive than he is. I think he is just a stepping stone. And he even said too, um, I'm just starting to. Or Vatican II hasn't been fully implemented yet, but I'm doing a lot of the work or something along those lines. And he he knows that his predecessor is going to do even more. So wonderful advertisements and i guess this would be kind of a good way to segue into uh true catholicism and looking back onto ireland and some numbers that we had there and some stats that we had there kev i you know a quick little little story uh with this first is i remember years ago now before i really cared much about the faith uh kind of laughing at saint patrick's day because to me it was just cultural which is our society mostly thinks it is and when immigrants were coming to this country, the Irish typically settled up north in the tri-state area here near Boston, and the Italians settled more south near New York. And um, so being Italian or whatever, it was pretty common that you were told that you really don't mix with the Irish. They are up north. They kind of, you know, they are their own different ethnicity here or whatever and uh you don't mix and same with the irish they kind of kept their distance from italians and uh i i think i told this story before even when some of my parents were growing up uh they lived in some of those midway points and it was kind of pretty clear like you stay on the italian side like you don't mix with them they're the they're the irish and for whatever reasons i don't know but that was kind of the thing so growing up i thought you know like wow i those Irish are going to celebrate. I used to say, uh, I'm going to have spaghetti on St. Patrick's Day just to rub it in their face. That used to kind of be my little, uh, my little, oh, my little, man. my little poke, He's you know, Italians. at them. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How brutal are we? And uh, it was only, you know, maybe a handful of years ago back when I started to really take um, the the life and, and the, the proselytism of St. Patrick seriously and just how much it was just almost it was very touching it was very beautiful and you see a great story that I, I came across too is that when saint patrick arrived in ireland and he was meeting with the kings and the court and all of that and attempting to convert them they gave him a poison drink at dinner and it's in one of the books about him and they they put a poisonous drink in front of him and he blessed it with the sign of the cross and the glass exploded and the the poison kind of seeped out or whatever and um it is said that he converted over 100,000 people to catholicism and led them all to baptism so of course that's uh, absolutely a superb proselytizer but really the, but, the faith well then then he's an enemy of, of he's an enemy right 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 yeah. bergoglio did say that proselytism is a sin mushroom. it's evil it's Mush the worst yeah he's a mushroom just popping out of the, the out of the ground but kev listen to some of these numbers so i i dug through a little bit this morning um well, this was put out by Cambridge University. It said that there was once a time, now I don't have a date on this, but there was once a time that Ireland had more religious, 15,323, than those in civil service and government, 14,695. There were more priests and nuns than there were those devoted to government life. I mean, that in and of itself is very, very telling. The church nearly, uh, the church once ran nearly all of Ireland's schools. And a very high point here during the reign of Pope Pius IX, right after uh, one of the famines that hit the hit the area, 
nearly 95% of Ireland's population attended Sunday Mass. Wow. Now, you look back here, there is a quote by a, um, a sociologist who once commented, to be a good Irish person was to be a good Catholic. <laughs> and that those two, and that's the end of the quote, but that those two were were intertwined with one another. If you wish to be a good Irishman, you need to be a good Catholic. They were inseparable. To be Catholic is to be Irish. And it said um, there was once a time as well where in many countries they would have, you know, posters of their dictators or whoever ran their heart. Um, almost all Irish homes had a painting of uh, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which was mass produced in the country and distributed to um, all of the houses there. So it was almost impossible to go into an Irish house at some point and not see an image of the, the Sacred Heart. Um on the walls and that has taken obviously a tremendous dip post council i wonder why um but but, it, but it's has, amazing because it, it it just it shows you you know it's kind of like the, the japanese in a way right i mean when when you're oppressed you're not in this case not by the government by the by the english government really and you're suffering and you're you're being tortured really and, and starved to death where do you go to, you know, you, you go to God, you know, when you're struggling and, and suffering and, and that's, it's, again, it's a hard reality that we have to face is that, you know, when we're comfortable in life, we're almost always farther from God. That, that's just the truth of it. That, that's for individual people. Yeah. That's for, you know, in general, you know, that society and, and you see it right now where we're, we're, we're getting a little away from being comfortable. I think you're starting to see people start to suffer a little bit, at least, you know, if you're watching, TikTok and people complaining about, you know, not being able to pay their bills. And, um, and part of it is because of, you know, mistakes they've made, et cetera. But I mean, eventually you're going to reach a point where, you know, I, I've asked this myself, you know, it, is it better to have a war? Because in the end, Matt, right. I mean, I have a couple of kids, you know, another mm -hmm. one on the way and I don't want them to suffer. I don't want them to see war, Sure, but what is our primary goal on earth? You know, I mean, for everyone, for the entire population, for, for Bergoglio, we want everyone to go to heaven. So, so if that's the case, do we want an easy life or, or do we want famine and war to save souls? And, and I'm not saying want that, that that's a, that's the wrong word, but you see what I mean, Matt, that you see when, when life gets too easy, then you start to have this craziness like you see in Ireland right now, which I think you're going to talk about next because it's a, because when you, when you go from the extreme of, of suffering and death and Hey, I might live only another year. So I'm going to spend all of my time at the church or praying to, to the sacred heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then you go to, Oh, well we actually have life pretty good. So let's, let's uh, elect a gay transgender president. You know, I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but I think he's gay. So, so I mean, you know, yeah, that, that is that, that's where we are, you know, and so, okay, bring, bring on famine, Matt. <laughs> I, don't, I know that's an extreme take, but bring it on. Mm. And it, it, you just see here too, and I, and I found this and it was actually, this is a fairly secular article. So it's not like it's written by any, any Catholic writer or whatever. It's just, just assessing from a third point of view, um, the, really the fall of Ireland. And he, the, the, the writer here, he says, um, it really peaked. And he mentions too, because obviously we have our own interpretation of this, but he says, uh, it, 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 it there was a collapse after the sixties in the sixties hmm. and uh, he puts that decade like, you know, I, I, huh. And, um, he even says here, uh, when we hit around the year 2000, uh, the calf, he, his opinion was that the church in Ireland had collapsed. Um, they're looking at numbers, I guess here, um, as of 2020, um, about 27% of Irish, Irishmen, women, whatever, uh, attended uh, Sunday Mass, down from, uh, they actually have record, it was 91% uh, uh, just a few decades ago. So we went from 91% to 27%. It says the amount of Irish people who call themselves Catholics is somewhere in the 60s, but most of them refer to them as cult themselves as cultural Catholics, which means they quote here, they put up with the church's rites of passage, but they have little interest in any religious dogma or any of her humble traditions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, Matt, and it says oh, here, many, hear it. many like the French are de facto atheists. They describe themselves as having been quote, born Catholic, but don't believe in a God or are unaware of him. You know, you know, Matt, it's, it's really easy to be a Catholic, right? I mean, honestly, like mm -hmm. we have to be baptized and we have to follow the church's teachings and dogmas and doctrines. That's 
that's it. And it's not that hard. I mean, it's hard to or reach else you're it. It's it's hard to reach heaven, but it, it's it's easy to actually be a member of the Catholic Church. But if you don't believe in the dogmas of the church, you are not Catholic by the definition of being Catholic. That's Correct. it. That's and the Pius end, XII was clear. I, with oh, it's, it's extremely clear. That, yes. That's not my opinion. Go look it up, people. If you deny a dogma of the faith, you are not a Catholic. Right. So it's just like, I mean, so so how many Catholics do we actually have in Ireland? Ten? Matt? <laughs> Ten people? I mean, it's not, it's insane. And, and you see how the devil has worked in the countries that, that, that our Lord loved best. I mean, if that's the best way to say, yes. you know, in these countries, you know, the, look at France. France just legalized it. No, they didn't just legalize it. They, they put into their constitution the legality of abortion. That is the first daughter of the Catholic Church. And look at Ireland. <laughs> the, the, the Ireland, which is which is the, the island of the saints. This, is, rem- this is the island that saved Europe, not just not just in terms of faith. They saved them in terms of culture, in terms of history. We, Matt, we would have no history of Europe if it weren't for the Irish monks, period. Right. Right. They, they all call it the, you know, the Dark Ages. Well, you know who made it better? The Irish monks. So, so you all may, maybe want to go back and look at history and realize that if it weren't for your Catholic faith, the true Catholic faith, you wouldn't exist. The Vikings would have conquered. The Muslims would have conquered, etc. And it's just it makes me ill that these stupid people think that they can just do away with it and not care. And, well, mm-hmm. okay, then Ireland will cease to exist. And, well, we're seeing that right now. That's it. Do you remember, too, um, Ireland, maybe a few years ago, had that big abortion vote where abortion got yeah. passed. And do you remember yeah. all these people celebrating in the streets? They're having parades. They were taking to the streets. And I don't know if you saw the video. Um, it's it's very troubling in France when the I don't know who yeah. she was, but she announced the votes of um, of the abortion law. And you can just see like the glee in her face. You could see like she's trying not to smile as she makes this announcement. How many of these people are possessed, Matt? I'm serious. I mean, how how many have, have literally a devil inside them? I'm not kidding. I mean, I, that, that's the creepiest, the craziest thing of our lives, our society. How many people are actually possessed by the devil because they willingly want the devil to be inside them? I mean, I mean, if you, if you want to actually kill your, your child that, that you, that you with God, you know, created and with a man or a woman or whatever, you know, whoever you are, you know, and and if you did that and then you just willingly kill them, I mean, talk about the best possible way to welcome the devil into your soul. Come on. And you think about it too, is all of the, (laughs) all of these countries and and, it mentions this in the article too, and you see this in Europe. um, They say there is a remnant of old Catholicism. uh, Not, I don't I should rephrase that. There's remnants of Catholicism here. You know, and you see, and, and he talks about this, you can travel through Ireland and it's not uncommon to see this very old statue of the Blessed Virgin just in in the midst of hills or these, you know, the a crucifix just poised in, 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 the, in the forest or whatever. Like it, it was so, it was so alive in these countries. Obviously the eldest daughter of the church, Catholic, Catholic France, um, where they were ingrained with one another. You couldn't have, just like how we said here with Ireland, you couldn't have these countries without Catholicism and you couldn't have, they were, they were together. And those remnants of the, of the faith, um, still live in these areas. And, you know, you, you, you look back and you think of what once was and how troubling it, it really, really is. Like if these are not the end, like what does the end times look like? Um, and then the thing is too, is who catapulted all of this in the council did. And the the thing is we look at the men who, who, who promulgated the council throughout the entire world. Um, and we call them saints, Hmm. John, the 23rd, Paul, (laughs) right, but right, right, right. But they have the title of the, they, I mean, that is awful. That that is just. No, you're, you're right. Sorry, you know, and they, they they create these things, you know, the the, the theology of the body, and they they they, mm, they promote, humbling, you know, yeah. condoms in Africa. These are facts, people. Go Google them. Go. You don't have to trust me. Go look them up. This is easily defined. They they have promoted these things. Uh, look at the theology of the body. No, maybe not. Don't maybe don't look that up because it's, it's disturbing. It's disgusting, and and it is. You see, again, I, I just saw a stat on Facebook, and I have no idea if this is true. So you can Google this one and tell me I'm wrong. This might not be true, but I saw. 48% of um, what it was, 48% of married people lived together before they got married. Um, 47% of right, Catholics that's... lived together before they got married. So it's 1% less. So Matt, hurrah, you know, to the, to the Catholics, you know, that 1% of people who are actually not living in sin before getting married. This is what it is, man. I mean, 
we, we live in a world where it, it's all words. It's not actually actions. And I, I can speak for myself. I'm a sinner. It's not like I'm this perfect paragon of holiness. Of course not. But, but I mean, again, when you start to see these things where they say, well, yeah, we, we say we're Catholic in name, but we don't follow, you know, all of the dogmas of the church. What are you talking about? Then you're not a Catholic. Shut up and call yourself a stupid little atheist and go bury your head in a in the in a hole. I'm sorry. I mean, I just I can't mm. deal with that. I mean, don't call yourself it if you're not actually practicing it. And it was, it was if, one if you're of, Novus Ordo and, you, and you're practicing it or trying, okay, that's at least something. It was one of the piouses. I forget which one, but he said the Catholic faith is either accepted or rejected as a whole. There's no parts of it. Mm -hmm. you, you either you accept everything, right. or if you deny even one aspect of it, one doctrine of it, you deny the whole thing. The whole thing is gone. You, there's the whole element ecclesiology and partial and communion and all of that is 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 all is 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 a total mismatch of what the popes have taught and said throughout the however many centuries now. And what what's what's crazy too is you would think that as this 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 blunder happens in and France and and Ireland and all of that that you would have a vicar of Christ who is raising yeah. his voice to condemn heresy and to condemn these things. And where is he? It's their silence. Probably if not talking promotion about the, of it. The, the feelings of the forest, right? Probably the cries yeah, of the of right, the, exactly. of, the, of the wind. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Abortion, the mur murdering <laughs> of innocent babies is being legalized around the world, and the and the the quote unquote pope is oh let's save the trees. Let's here here a little immigrant kiss my or I'll kiss your feet. Sorry, don't mm. kiss my feet. I'll kiss your. It, it's not. It, it's a farce. It's a joke. Every, I, and really, everyone. I hope people watching the show. Most people, I think, again, are probably already there, but. But really, I just think about all of these things that are happening. I, I St. Patrick, I heard a story about him one time, maybe from my mom's video. I don't remember, but but he, when he, I don't, I, I'm okay. I, I'm trying to remember the story straight. I think even hmm. to avoid temptation, I think even to avoid, I don't think he was even having a temptation. To avoid temptation, he would go to the nearby river and stand in the river to his chest and put his arms out in the shape of a cross and pray. I don't remember vespers or or pray the you know pray something and so this was back in the 400 so this was mm. this was when prayer was probably a little bit more mental than 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 um than not but just I, I just imagine that man that that was to avoid temptation the, the, talk about holiness I, why do you think he could convert a hundred thousand people and, and, and you know if you think about that and okay think about ourselves first what are we doing how am I doing am I going to stand in a river when I'm trying when I get a temptation. No, I should. I should. I mean, I mean, hey, if I'm having a temptation, go stand in a cold shower. Probably a good idea. Whatever temptation it is, go and do it. And I think that this, these are things we can learn and see. And, and Matt, this is exactly, and I'm sure you would agree with me, that's how we get civilization back. That's how we get it back. If we actually want to win whatever this is we're doing, I'm not totally convinced it's the end of the world. I think it's probably, we're, 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 I think we're certainly in the abomination of desolation, but I think the time, mm. all these right, ideas with God with are very, they're very, you know, I don't know. They're they're not like we think of time. So we haven't another... seen the signs that yeah exactly are here. Yeah, right, right, right. I don't think there's an antichrist. I mean, oh, it's not Donald Trump, guys. You know, calm down. And, and I think that you know, I think we have time, and I think that we have to remember that if we want to save the world, well, we have to be Saint Patrick. We do. I mean, even if okay, you're not going to be a bishop. Okay, fine. Go be a father. And go stand in the river with your arms held out and sacrifice. It, it, it's not like so everyone can see it. And I think, again, Matt, we talked about this so many times on the show. That's like, that's not how this works. It's not so that, like, you know, I'm this great man that everyone can see. You know, watch me suffer. No, that's not it. There is a spiritual warfare. And you see, as you say, the, 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 the glint in the eye of this woman saying, we're going to murder oh. children. Yeah, look at my look at my face. I'm going to laugh about it it's satanic it's brutal it's it's, it's from it's the devil to watch. It's it, to watch it is it's it's evil and, and you see this in ireland as you said i remember that maybe five ten years ago i remember yeah it. right right right. yeah right. and it's like you know abortion is legal and the crowd goes wild well yes. how are we you know and i think we just shake our heads and say oh oh poor poor us poor yeah. the world well okay you know go stand in a river hmm. pray the rosary i mean i mean i gotta do it too i mean it's not like i'm i'm gonna say this i'm I, I know it's easy to say rather than do, but I think that's the point. We have to go and, Saint, and sacrifice and pray. And you think St. Paul, uh, how he said, I bring my body into subjection, right? And all of yeah. these very, very, very holy men, it's it's interesting. These very holy men, St. Patrick, and again, I've mentioned him on the show before, but King uh, King Louis of, yes. of St. Louis, of King of France, um, these men who probably 
uh, had very little difficulty with any sort of sin or temptation subjected themselves greatly. They would stand in river. I forget, maybe it was St. Francis de Sales, but um, he would jump into, into, into um, like, like, Perkery bushes, yeah. thorn bushes, right, right, right. St. Francis of Assisi did it for sure. Yes, yeah, yeah. So all of these these saints who, again, pro I mean, it would probably be whatever sin they were tempted with at the time, we would probably maybe roll our eyes at it or, or brush it yeah. off. Like, eh, it's not that that may be venial at most. And yeah. they went to these great lengths uh, to to subject themselves and to not, you know, give give heed to this this the, these temptations. And... Um, I mean, you really read through, and I and I have been going through this book on St. Patrick and uh, his journeys and all of that, and a really good Catholic book. Um, I can maybe I could I could share it somehow on the on yeah. the, on the on the site, but uh, just like you 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 see his zeal and you see his love of God, and <laughs> he was sent. And that's another thing too is he was sent by the Pope. So you know, you know we bring we tie Bergoglio into this, but um. Uh, Pope, I believe it was Pope Celestine, uh, had him. This was a mission, but he, he was St. Patrick wasn't like, I might as well just go and do this. He was sent by the church to proselytize, which is even funnier. And this problem is not unique to, to Francis either. John Paul II and Benedict had the same thing. There's no need for conversion. Uh, that again, I brought this up. John Paul II said that the Jews do not wait in vain for their Messiah. That is, that is, that is blasphemy. <sighs> To say that Christ did not come, they have their own Messiah who has not come yet. Um, their weight is not in vain. You, that's an actual quote. That is that is that is that is to deny Christ. And now you've you've had these popes who would send, you know, these men uh, to Christian nations. I think of Columbus. I think of you know um juan diego you think of these men who had these missions to go and convert pagan lands. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have Pachamama worship going on in the Vatican. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, it, that's exactly it, Matt. I mean, I mean, exactly. You have pagans trying to convert Catholics. That, that's Bergoglio. I mean, every I, 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 someone tried to convince me that I'm wrong. <clears throat> I, everything, every show we've ever done practically is has led to the fact that Bergoglio and probably half of the Vatican are pagans. They're they're not even atheists. They Athe worship right, right, right. I, I don't right. think they, atheism. They worship the earth or they something. They, they, there is some the I devil. Agree. And, and, and Matt, that, that's a clear teaching of the church that if you don't worship the true God, you worship demons. So, mm -hmm. so Bergoglio is a demon worshiper. That that's that's absolutely certain. I mean, I mean, he, and it was. Oh, I believe it was Pope Gregory. I believe it was Pope Gregory who said, uh, uh, "True worship of God is only in the Catholic Church. You can't worship Him in another in another religion or another faith." I mean, so these are things. Of, uh, we've seen a, such a shift. You know, of a, it was Mother Teresa. God loves all religions. All, yeah. all her book, which I used to have somewhere, um, said that all all these faiths lead to this one God. Uh, that is condemned staunchly by the voice of the magisterium. And for people to think that it's the same, I had someone tell me recently that uh, that the the Rome of today is the same Rome as it, the same faith of Rome as it's always been. Like, a, hmm. whew, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. So next week's Holy Week, Kev next week i'm ready already and, and then my, we and my have... birthday man i was telling you that before i everyone better wish me a happy birthday um <laughs> yes i'm very i'm very touchy that way I need march to be, uh march I need 25th to be march 25th yeah it's a good day yeah, yeah, yeah. but we were talking the about feast? for the show it's like yeah, a, we were talking the, about this the feast of the annunciation which is very nice um can kevin have cake <laughs> yeah can i have cake that's the first question the most important question <laughs> uh second question is yeah i mean is it is it superseded by by Holy Week, which I think Matt and I both agree it must be. So Holy Week supersedes it. So is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, is it pushed off until after Easter? If there's a priest or someone listening to this, please let us know, because I'm actually pretty curious about that. I assume it probably just goes away until next year. I actually don't know. Good question. But it's a problem with having a late March birthday. It's like half of my birthdays, it feels like, are in Holy Week. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to really have a big boomer birthday party during holy week <laughs> but but but, but it, it is the other side of it of course is that it's like it, it is holy week is such a special week of the year and it's such a week that it's like there's no other time like it i'm sure you would agree with me that you're, you're this preparation and you really start to feel it's like okay wow you know this is getting harder and you're pushing yourself and holy week's coming you got mass we we have it thursday friday saturday sunday monday in germany mm. which is pretty hard um, and so we do everything we can to, you know, to go to all those, you know, all those masses and they're long and it's difficult, but man, you, you get that, you get to Easter and it's like, this is what the faith is about, right? Christ, Christ suffered. It's hard. 
and he the most again. important day of the year. Yeah, the most rose important. again, man. He rose again. And, and and again, I think this is a really interesting topic. We probably talked about that for twenty <clears> minutes. But I mean, this that whole idea. I think because Matt, you'd agree with me. You know, people. I, I heard someone. One of my guests had a had a risen Christ statue in the background, and mm. and one of the one of the guests was like, or one, someone in the comments, "Why does he have a risen Christ statue?" I was like, "Well, well, Christ." did rise i mean <laughs> i mean the resurrection is a and i understand if if your faith is built around that and not the crucifix and not the suffering only then yeah okay but but the the risen christ is the that's the that's yeah. it. that's the culmination of everything is christ rising so so i think we get a little scared off by the protestant you know the the you know christ is risen you know hallelujah it's like well but yeah but well but he is, he is risen. And, and that is the biggest feast. And that is the most glorious moment in human history. And will always be Christ rose from the dead and let us into heaven, you know, hopefully. And I think that we got to remember that too, not to get too shied away from, from this idea that the risen Christ is, is the most glorious Christ. Hmm. It's an interesting point. Yeah. I mean, um, obviously as Catholics, we keep, you know, Christ is on the, on the cross. I think it was Fulton Sheen who said Christ without his cross is a man without a mission. So obviously we, we remember that and we keep that. And we, um, you know, we, that, that was the greatest moment in human history, truly where, you know, Christ died for us. I mean, that is, that is the, but when he, no, we, but when he rose, yes. ro- when he rose was the biggest moment. I mean, it's not when he died. Right, because he defeated, right, because death was defeated. Right, because right. Then, then he rose, and that's when the, the gates of heaven were open. I mean, the gates of heaven were open not when he died on the cross. He went to hell, and he came back up, and the, and the gates of heaven were open in the meantime. I mean, I mean, his rising is the glorious, you know, that's the glorious the occasion of, uh, yeah, the, exactly. The resurrection is the glorious occasion of Christ proving that, you know, he conquers all. The crucifixion is a necessary point of it that he had to die for our sins, but that's like the most tragic yes. point of it because we're all a bunch of losers who, who you know, <laughs> right. who put Christ to that. But the resurrection right. is when he proves that even though we've all we've all sinned and we've all led him to this, he conquered and he will yes. conquer. He will always conquer, and, and his and his mother will conquer, and, and that's the beautiful thing. So I think I think we got to. I think there's this this danger of getting a little too morose about it. It's it's only the crucifix, and it, I, of course, I, I fully fully understand that that is a huge part of it. But it's not everything. The risen mm. Christ, the resurrected Christ, is a is is the greatest part of it. That, I mean, that that's what a beautiful right. Thing. That is our celebration, right? It Easter is. Sunday is our celebration. Well, it's the biggest right? feast of the year. Well, why is right. it, Matt, that the resurrection, the Easter Sunday, is the biggest feast and not Good Friday? That mm. that's that's absolutely factual. I mean, the, the Easter Sunday is the biggest feast of the year. So that's because that's the biggest moment of, of all human history. And I think that we got to I think it's just it's so easy. I think especially traditional Catholics get into this. We mushrooms, I should say, we mushrooms fall into this idea that, you know, it's a it's all this woe is me. And it's all, you know, oh, Christ just died on the cross. And again, has it definitely has its place. But but he rose and he did. And yes, he 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 let it all happen that we can go to heaven. That's a pretty cool Pretty nice thing. That, I, mean, I think it's it's one of the, uh, cool is the wrong word, but you know what I mean, Matt. It's like, <laughs> pretty cool. It, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but 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 I think I mean Matt. That this is actually the point I'm trying to make. That I think the Protestants, and I think Irish back in the day, to pull this full circle, mm. had had truly un- the understanding that Christ is our brother. You know that, that he is our that really he is a he actually does personally or should personally have a relationship with all of us. We should have a relationship with him. And, and again, we, we just, Oh, that sounds so pro- No, we should. Mm. Christ died on the cross for all of us, all, every single person, every single person that will ever live. He died for each one of us. If it was for one person, we know that for sure. If it was for one person, he would have done it. It would have been worth it. And so that's something, again, I think we, we, we tend to, forget i t- i shouldn't say we i tend to forget i think we it's, it's good to remember that that that's awesome and i think the, the catholics in ireland once upon a time that they, they live their faith completely and, and it's one of those things that they, yeah. they mentioned the saints all the time you know you look at their their songs and their literature that was just part of their life they lived the faith they they, they like actually and, and sometimes maybe a little too far it, it pushed sacrilege but but it pushed sacrilege in our mind today because back in the day, that was life. 
You know, I mean, God in Christ, it was everything. Mary right, in the it States was everything. Was, it that was, was your everything. purpose was heaven. That's, yeah. that's it. Everything. Your yeah. whole life was based around heaven and Mary and the saints. And so if you said by the saints, you know, nowadays we think, oh, ooh, okay, that's a curse. But no, it was just how they talked because their entire thought and world revolved around heaven. Hmm. Boy. There's a beautiful picture. It was uh, yeah. it's, it's pre-Vatican uh, or around that time, actually, of an Irish family praying the rosary together after dinner one night. And a big family, you know, they bred like rabbits, as Bergoglio would say. <laughs> they were all kneeling down after <laughs> dinner uh, in one of their rooms. And, um, you know, there was no noise of television or music or stereo or whatever might have been the technology at the time. They were they had pictures of saints and then they were kneeling and they were praying the rosary as a family together. And so, like you said, it was more than just like, all right, I guess it's six o'clock. It's time for our rosary. It was it was it was the routine of life. And that's what made so many of these people saints. And like you think, like how how far we are today now from any of that at all, even myself or, you know, you, oh, you're reflecting, you're like, are we doing what they did? And, and what was their judgment? Like, you know, I don't think God's judgment changes. Um, we're held all held basically to the same standard, I guess, of, you know, preaching the faith and dying in the state of grace. Uh, but wow, we have a lot, a lot to go. And that's why the church gives us these penances too, you know, of Holy week and really of Lent to help us deny ourselves and to help us learn to subject our flesh uh, to truths and to deny our passions and all that the church kind of pre sets us up with her sacraments and her all the graces made available to us by her uh, to be holy. We just have to cooperate with it. Well, and keep our minds, just keep your minds on the faith you know, on, on, in a good way. You know, I, I think don't you don't have to go whip yourself. Just go and and read books of the saints and, and listen to beautiful music like Crusader, you know, film works just made you know about Our Lady. I mean, that's what it's about. And I mean, I mean, just to have your mind on heaven. And I'm totally talking to myself. Man, how often do I do I think about heaven once a day? Maybe you know. I mean, that it's the truth. And so I think that's that's the key. You know, you know, have, in hell too. I mean, hey, if heaven doesn't work, yeah. if you can't think about heaven, then think about hell. I and mean, that's mm. the uh, that's the other way. You know, think about oh. Do I want to go there? Okay, well, go read Our Lady of Fatima or go read, you know, mm-hmm. the other saints. You know, there, there are plenty who have plenty to say about hell. Go read it. And then if that scares you, okay, then do that. If know? anyone wants, so Kev, for the last, for Holy Week here or whatever, The Four Last Things by St. Alphonsus Liguori is a crazy, oh. crazy book Whew. that will make your hair stand up. Yeah, it so you're, you're giving the, the right sound effects. Um people should really look at that you can find it online you can find pdfs online yeah. and just read small sections of um death judgment heaven and hell he writes very staunchly a- about it and has a lot to say too about um the power of our lady uh yep. which our protestant brethren will enjoy <laughs> how dare you <laughs> yeah, pre- preparation for death also by saint alphonse so they're they're tough but they it, yeah do it I, I exactly as matt said that, that if there's anything that will prepare you to uh yeah you know, to understand i i'm nothing my life is nothing, and that's the point. That that's exactly what it's about. That the point is, I am here just to go to heaven, and there exactly. you go. That that's what we need. So no, definitely go. Anything by Saint Alphonsus is amazing. I mean, really, mm-hmm. he's he, he really has so much about Our Lady and about about everything that's important. So, um, Matt, no, I really appreciate it. Um, did you want to talk about Pius the Sixth or no? I guess we'll. we'll no, I think we're good. That's good. Time. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll save that. Time. Save All the right. content. I gotta go check my. I gotta go check my soup. Your bacon. Um, oh, I gotta check my, right. no, my. My bacon's off the stove. It better be off the stove. Okay. It's, uh, it's in trouble. Right. It'll this, be but. extra crispy. I like and, and, and everyone, let us know in the comment section what what do you eat for St. Patrick's Day? What do you watch? We're also curious about that. We're gonna watch. We watched hmm. The Quiet Man with John Wayne. That's just a family tradition. Um, you don't have to watch a movie, obviously, on St. Patrick's Day, but it's just kind of what we do. But if you do, if you read a book, whatever you do, let us know if you have any traditions for St. Patrick's Day, because I know that many, many, many Americans have a big um you know uh what's the call what's the word you know they're, they're connected with ireland so yeah yeah, yeah. they they yeah. celebrate it yeah, yeah exactly Quite so let's know, what do you cook what do you what do you what do you watch what do you read what do you do any of that stuff because well i'm interested because we're always looking for new traditions and stuff and we have some pretty cool traditions for holy week but maybe we'll save that for next week on on uh easter monday which would be published mm-hmm. on my birthday so matt we'll talk we'll wow. talk We'll talk next week on my birthday, and Matt can uh, send me a gift. So, um. <laughs> post your Venmo in the comments. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, that's a good point. Exactly. I'll send you everyone you my should. address. We you can send me you, if yes. you send a gift by now. I might get it by by next Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, everyone. Seriously, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and uh, well, hopefully Matt and I will be back next week. It's going to be pretty busy. I know Holy Week might be a little interesting after Easter. We'll see. Obviously, the the, the podcast might be a little bit. 
uh, weird um, during Holy Week. Not weird, but I mean, come on. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not going to be publishing too many podcasts during Holy Week. I hope you all appreciate that. We'll saw. I assume we're going to have Father Father Geckel's Goodyear, uh, which is I just can't even understand how he's doing all this because he's amazing. Um, very good friend of mine, good friend of the show. So, so please, and again, I'm going to say it one more time before we end. Sorry, Matt. Please no, 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 go you're, you're check this out. Go check out the series. I know it's kind of late in the in the show, but it's just a very, very, very detailed version of the Passion. Um, and Father Geckel is so good. He's so good at reading. He's at, he has a magnificent voice, um, and it's it's beautiful. And he spent so much time on it. So please go do that. The last two weeks, I cannot recommend it enough. It is absolutely what you need for the next two weeks of Lent and to prepare for a Holy Week. I can really say that. So so please go do that. And in the meantime, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Matt and I will hopefully be back next Monday as long as no one's sick or, I don't know, uh, I don't know, running from the police. Someone's, or yeah, yeah, yeah right. You never know. <laughs> maybe maybe we're just turning to mushrooms full time. You, you never know. That's right. Happen. That's Over right. Here. Fun at, guy. At the Catholic Family Podcast. <laughs> at the Catholic Family Fun Guy. Until next week, I'm Kevin. He's Matt. God bless.